everyone! Welcome to yet another crafter noon. This month we will be making string art. In the spirit of Halloween, I'll be creeping it real with a wicked skull design, but you can use this technique to make a string art of whatever you want to. Here's what you'll need to make a skull. You'll need a piece of wood, preferably a kind that's easy to hammer nails into, otherwise this will be an extremely difficult craft. Don't ask why I know. Okay, moving on. A printed out image of a skull in the size you want it to be. I'm using 11 by 14 because that will fit on my board really nicely. Uh, next step, you'll need white nails and these need to be small enough to nail into the wood without going through the other side. But you'll also need enough poking out so you'll have something to tie your strings around. Mine are gonna be one inch. Uh, next up, you'll need a hammer. Get an adult to help you with that if hammering is too scary or strenuous for you. Black paint. And lastly, string. I'm using white, but this would probably also look really cool in bright colors. Okay, let's get started. Start by painting the wood black. Let it dry all the way. I let mine sit for a day, just to be sure. While you're waiting on that to dry, prep your design by marking where you'll place the nails when you start nailing. I used a red sharpie and made some small dots around the skull, just spacing them out a little bit. And next, you're gonna tape that down to your image board. Lightly secure the tape. I just want it to hold my image for now, not take the paint off. Okay, here comes the hard part, hammering the nails. Save yourself a lot of trouble and make sure you have the right kind of wood that you can easily hammer nails into. Mine is like a really dense particle board and it was a pain in the neck. Once those are all hammered in, remove the image. Be gentle yanking the paper off so you don't accidentally remove any of these nails. Cool, it definitely looks like a skull, sort of. Okay, now get your string and go wild. I started by outlining the outer shape of the skull twice. I went in the same looping direction here so that my outline would look uniform. Um, sometimes the string can be tricky to handle. Try to keep it tight so it doesn't come undone or start to slack. I also try to press it down as I go so I'll have some space for the growing layers of string. Another rule I kept in mind was to make sure each nail had multiple wraparounds. Like at least two or three on top of the outline layers. That'll ensure that you won't have any major gaps in the zigzag design once you start doing that. All right, after going around twice, I made zigzags with the string on the inside of the design. Be careful not to go inside the eyes, nose, or mouth. I plan on leaving those empty for the most part. If I start to get close to the eyes, nose, or mouth, I will just line them like we did to the outside of the skull. But it's kind of just go with the flow. Don't worry too much about the design, whether or not you should be zigzagging or outlining. Um, because it'll end up just coming together. It's a lot like when you are coloring something and it looks like nothing at first, but then once you're getting towards the end, it becomes more of a thing, if you know what I'm saying. All right, we've got some time to kill here, so how about a skeleton joke? What musical instrument does a skeleton play? A trombone. <laughs> okay, okay. What do you call a skeleton who won't get off the couch? A lazy bones. <laughs> okay, okay. Last one, I promise. What does a skeleton say before eating? Bone appetite. <laughs> Oh, wait a second. Skeletons don't eat, do they? They don't have a stomach. Okay. All right, enough of the torture.
Once you're done zigzagging around, tie a knot with the string. This is a lot more challenging than it sounds, as you can see with my struggle here. Okay, now it's done. Let's get a glamour shot. Ah! Yikes, that's some spooky stuff right there. All right, I hope you enjoyed this spooktacular crafternoon. Check out our past crafts here and be sure to subscribe to the library's channel for all the latest in virtual library programming. Thanks for watching and see you next time.